Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Mikos. I'm an associate professor in cardiology at Johns Hopkins University. And it's my great pleasure to be here in the AHA studio with Dr. Rafael Diaz, who's a cardiologist from Argentina, who is the lead investigator of the Repair It 2 trial, which is presented here at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. So just for a brief background, the Prepare It 1 trial was already presented. That was a trial evaluating icosapit ethyl for the prevention of COVID among individuals who are at risk for COVID-19. Now, the Prepare It 2 trial evaluated the use of icosapent ethyl in non-hospitalized patients who have tested positive for COVID to see whether icosapent ethyl could reduce hospitalization rates and mortality among COVID-positive patients. So, Dr. Diaz, can you briefly give us a summary of the key findings of your trial? Sure. Thank you, Erin, for the introduction, and I will try to summarize the trial in the next few minutes. As she already mentioned, uh, the prepared one trial was developed and was designed in order to test if icosapentyl ethyl is or was uh, useful in the context of prevention of COVID. In the prepared two trial, we change the, the a little bit the focus, and we say, okay shall we prevent uh, complications in those patients that are not admitted to hospital, so are not hospitalized in the setting of a positive test of COVID? So those patients with some uh, criteria, for example, more than 40 years old, were included in the study, and there are two or three uh, qualifiers of the study that I think are, are worth to mention. One is the trial was done absolutely online, so we didn't have any physical contact with the patients. Second, the patients themselves enrolled and randomized into the trial. And third, uh, we checked them daily by a, a kind of, not telemedicine, but similar to telemedicine between texts. We use WhatsApps, WhatsApp, WhatsApp texts and messages and uh, virtual, virtual meetings with them. So the aim of the trial was to administrate uh, icosapentatil in a very high loading dose, eight grams per day during three days, followed by four grams per day during one month that was the period of observation and exposition of the, uh, of the, uh, of the drug. Uh, about 2,000 people were uh, randomized, more were enrolled, but some of them for, for, for many reasons were excluded from this analysis, mainly because they have exclusion criteria and they were not randomized into the trial. And then we followed them up until day 28. Um, the baseline characteristics are very well balanced between the two treatment groups. Uh, most of them, well, all of them were positive in terms of PCR because that was one of the inclusion criteria. So positive PCR uh, was the most important in inclusion criteria. And uh, uh, let's go directly to the primary aim and primary results of the trial. Uh, we found that indication for hospitalization or death, and as I will stress a little bit more, indication for hospitalization or death uh, were present in almost 14% of the placebo group and in about 11.2% of the active group. That gives us a relative risk or a hazard ratio of 0.84, so 16% reduction, but non-significant reduction with confidence intervals that went uh, beyond the unit. So this is a trial that the primary outcome of the trial was 16% reduction, but non-significant from the statistical point of view. 
So great. I had a couple of follow-up questions. So, you know, eicosapent ethyl is a high dose purified form of EPA and omega-3 yeah. fatty acid. And inflammation is hypothesized, of course, to play a causative role in COVID-19. So I know last year at the National Lipid Association, Dr. Bott had presented um, a very small study. I think there was only 50 in each arm about eicosapent ethyl among patients with COVID-19 and had showed a reduction in C-reactive protein and also an improvement in the flu, flu pro score. Um, I think in your results, you didn't see a significant difference in the flu pro symptom score, but I was wondering what was the difference in the CRP between the two arms? Did you see a reduction in inflammation too? No, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see a reduction, but remember that was true in the prepared one because in this trial, we didn't measure any kind because we didn't have contact with the patients. So this was a, clinical trial without any lab parameter. So in the prepared one trial, yes, we do. We did have uh, assessment, lab assessment in 2,000 people, 1,000 versus 1,000, but these were not people, these were not sick people, were individuals to prevent infections. And in that case, we didn't see in those individuals a difference in, in, in uh, um, uh, C-reactive protein, but the context is those were normal subjects. We don't know in this population because we haven't got any lab assessment because we never contact them physically. So we don't know in this, and it's true in the trial in deeper bat trial that was in fifty and fifty more or less one hundred people. They showed a very clear uh, reduction in, in, in the uh, C-reactive protein and a clear, a clear improvement of the flu score. Right. Well, important things I want to highlight. I mean, you've used a really high dose of eicosapent ethyl uh, that's, you know, twice the dose that we use for prevention of yeah. cardiovascular events. And yet, um, of course, it was only 28-day follow-up, but I thought it was really reassuring. There was no increased rates of atrial fibrillation um, or uh, bleeding, which I think is a good thing. We were um, very carefully yeah. looking after those, and we have zero bleeding in both groups and zero atrial fibrillation in both groups. And all the major side effects that are very, very, very few are related to GI and no more than that. So uh, the, very, the, the very high loading dose was very, very well correlated. So opens a new window for, because these are six patients, acute patients with a very high dose, and open a new window for, for acute patients with a, a loading dose of IP. Well, I agree. Everything trended in the favorable direction and Absolutely. at least showed overwhelming safety. Well, I think unfortunately we're out of time, but I just want to congratulate to you and your investigators uh, for uh, you know conducting such, I think, an important trial. I think uh, you know we learned a lot from this as well. And thank you for your time uh, here today in the studio. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for your question, Eddie.